to make law. And we scroll down and we stop there. Legislative department, General Assembly, the legislative authority of the state, in other words, the power to make law, shall be vested in a General Assembly which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives and the style of every law shall be, be it enacted by the General Assembly of the state of Iowa. And so we have to understand that there are, is a clear and separate distinction between the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch. There, there's absolutely a separation between these three. It's not, it's, it's not even debatable. And what we saw on April 3rd were judges that made law. And so we have uh, one, one group of, of folks cheering judges making new law, even though it was in clear violation of constitutional authority. And we have another group of individuals that are, are denouncing that because they hate the idea of gay marriage in the state. But if we look back at our justice system prior to April 3rd, we found disparate justice existed. We found justice that was driven by the caliber and quality of the lawyer. And in order to understand how our system devolved to a system based upon how good your lawyer is, we have to go no further than, farther than the Missouri plan, which was, became uh, the standard in 1962, which was designed to be a merit-based system, but in reality has become a system very much controlled by members of the Iowa Bar Association. Now, the merit plan basically says, Iowa's judges are nominated by a nominating commission. Half of those people serving on the nominating commission are appointed by the governor and half are members of the, of the bar. They send nominees to the governor and the governor has so much time to pick from the folks they send and if the governor doesn't pick then the chief justice picks. And that's it. Well, there are some, some fundamental flaws in that plan, and we won't go through all of them. But the first is that there's nothing that distinguishes that members of the bar are uniquely qualified to determine who judges should be as it relates to justice. Now, one or two lawyers on, on, the, on the nominating commission to provide expertise or competence might be valuable. We talked about boards and commissions having a third component of expertise. But once you give them 50% control, you've basically taken a, the judiciary away from the, from the public and given it to the profession. And what has been the impact of that? Well, prime example is when Dr. David England does no time for being able to fill this room up with dope, and a college student sits in jail right now for having three joints. And this has been the nature of justice in Iowa. An equal, disparate, class and wealth, socioeconomic driven, and not resembling anything close to justice. So we offer a remedy. Now for those individuals out there that believe that voting the three judges off solves this problem, it simply doesn't. The truth is the nominating commission can simply reappoint those judges and even if the governor doesn't want to accept them, the chief justice can simply say, we take Marsha Tiernas back and we take the other two back. So the action may be punitive, but it is not corrective. So how do we propose correcting the Missouri plan? The first thing we do is we reduce significantly the influence of the Bar Association. I do not say this to disparage any of my attorney friends. But the fact of the matter is, is that the same folks who would defend a person that blew up a busload of nuns and children going to Adventureland are the folks who control who sits on the bench. That does not uniquely qualify them any more than the citizenry itself. So we reduce the number of folks on the bar. The other thing we do is we eliminate the role of, of, the, of the chief justice in appointing. And that becomes the sole province of the governor who cannot point from those persons sent to him or reject them and the process starts over. And once a governor picks the nominee, 
the citizens vote on ratification. At the federal level, the Senate ratifies. We feel that it makes much more sense to have the citizenry vote to ratify the judge. Now, we also take two other key steps to fixing the judiciary, and then we move to the area of reducing government. And those areas become much quicker in terms of our, our conversation. We go to an inquisitorial system away from our adversarial system. Now, for those of you who are saying, what the heck is that? Under our current system, I, I, I probably need the whiteboard again. Can I get the whiteboard? The whiteboard? OK. No, that's fine. Under an inquisitorial system, facts make a difference. Now, under our current system, which is adversarial, the courts are basically considered a neutral party, which we know they're really not, but they're considered that. And what we end up with is if you're Dr. David England and you have a great attorney, you go free. And if you're, you're Jason and you're a college student who tries to defend yourself or has a public defender, you end up in jail. If Slick is your attorney and you're the defense, you go free. If Slick is your attorney and he's the prosecutor, you're in trouble. And if Dotifus is the prosecutor, don't no sweat, plan the after, after freedom party. And if Dotifus is your defense attorney, well, get a file. <laughs> do they still bake files and cakes? <laughs> okay. Or just plan to do some real time. And that system's wrong. In an inquisitorial system, the courts participate as finders of facts, and justice is often much, much more equitable because the facts drive everything else. And then the third area we, we restructure the courts is by creating a court of arbitration. Now, if you kill somebody, you have a right to a speedy trial. But if you're in a car accident where everybody agrees to the facts, you might have to wait five, six, eight, nine, ten years. Civil matter, the roof caves in, eight, nine, ten years. So what we do is we create a court of arbitration where working class people can swiftly access justice and resolution to their civil matters. So that's the reorganization part. The second thing we talk about is reducing state government. Now, we're, we're having some challenges with the board, and we apologize. We tried. It'll be better next time. But when we look at the, the um, idea of reducing government, we begin in those areas where we spend the most money. 90.4% of the general fund is spent in three areas. We can call that chart up, can't we? Yeah. Which one do you want? Fiscal facts. facts. Okay. And, and actually, even before, before we bring that one up, Let's, let's bring up the overall, uh, we've got it from an eye worth fighting for, the, the uh, chart that shows how state government grew. Right. That's all expenditures. Is it the eye worth fighting for banner? And this, this, is a, this is an important chart because it shows you uh, how state government has grown in terms of revenue and spending. Reorganize, reduce, one more down, perfect. Uh, I'm sorry, the previous page. State of state. 